everybody, Trevor here, and you know what? I fucking hate Mattel. Yeah, that's today's top five. Before I begin my rage, I just want to say, sorry I didn't upload this last week. I just got busy in real life, and I get occasional writer's block for my scripts. I hope you all understand that. Anyways, let's start off with a little backstory on Mattel. They were founded in 1945, possibly at the end of World War II, and they were the ones responsible for making classic toys such as Hot Wheels, Barbie dolls, and Matchbox cars. By the way, I used to like Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars when I was younger. In 2012, Apex Partners, the owners of Entertainment, sold the rights to Mattel, and in 2013, they hired Andrew Brenner as the new head writer for the show. And our productions animated the CGI Thomas series from 2013 all the way to 2016, when they filed for bankruptcy. Luckily, Jamfield Entertainment took over and hired some of ARC's former staff to continue the series from 2016 to 2021. And, to be honest, I thought Mattel had a really great start back in 2013 because of these reasons. And because Andrew Brenner was one of the people who saved Thomas' legacy, Fans like me call this the Renaissance era. Get it? Because it's a pun on Renaissance and Brenner? Whatever. And they also made a lot of great specials, including King of the Railway, Tale of the Brave, Sora's Legend of Lost Treasure, and The Great Race, just to name a few. In addition to the Renaissance era, they even brought back some fan favorite characters, including Duck, Oliver, Toad, Donald and Douglas, Bill and Ben, and of course, Daisy, just to name a bunch. And those are the reasons why seasons 17 through 21 are my second favorite era of the Thomas franchise, with seasons 1 to 7 being number 1. Unfortunately, it was too good to last. Ever since Big World Big Avengers was announced and released, many of the older fans, aside from myself, were very disappointed with the new direction the show was going at the time, because it was trying way too hard to be politically correct and a bit woke too. And when that era ended, a new reboot was announced in October of 2020 known as Thomas and Friends All Legends Go, which is even worse than Big World Big Adventures itself due to its cartoony animation, unnecessary redesigns, and lack of consistency. And to quote the unlucky tug, Wobo looks like the railway series compared to this. And I have to agree. And keep in mind, this video is not to attack everyone at Mattel, because like most corrupt companies, there are a few people there I still respect to this day. Examples include Andrew Brenner, who left after season 23, Neil Crone, Rachel Miller, Sharon Miller, and of course, Michael White, who is one of the only few people who still cared about the franchise. This video is mostly attacking the higher-ups of Mattel because of their hypocrisy, the way they told their consumers to F off, and how they ruined the Thomas brand in general. So, please get ready for one of my angriest rants yet, which are my top 5 reasons on why I hate Mattel nowadays. Number 5. Let's talk distribution. One of the biggest problems with Mattel is that they didn't bother releasing any more Thomas DVDs regarding seasons 21 through 24 in the US. In fact, the last two we got were Christmas on Sodor, which was the only US DVD to have season 21 episodes so far, and Big World Big Adventures the movie. And no, the Thomas and Magic Rero 20th Anniversary Blu-ray combo doesn't count since that was released by Shout Factory. In addition, the saddest fact about the US DVD release of Big World Big Adventures the movie was that it didn't get a release date until after the year it came out, which was 2018. How low can you fucking go, Mattel? Another sad fact is, is that Thomas and Friends on Nick Jr. lasted from March 12, 2018 to early 2020. I'm pretty sure it was due to the current pandemic at the time, or maybe because Mattel doesn't even care anymore. But hey, at least we still have Big World Big Avengers on Netflix. Number 4. The Poor Quality in Their Merchandise I've already made several videos on my thoughts on Thomas Wood, as well as my most recent top 5 about why I don't like the new Trimaster system, so I suggest you go check them out on my YouTube channel. But it's not just with Thomas the Tank Engine, it's also with other properties including Pixar's Cars and Barbie Dolls, at least from what I've heard. And because of that, 
their stocks have gotten so low over the years. Number 3. The All Engines Go Reboot Like the last candidate, I've already made several videos on why I despise this reboot more than anything related to Thomas the Tank Engine. But, I also give out a few pauses about it, including the return of Neil Crone. However, I also should add in another good thing about All Engines Go earlier, which that it's not canon to the official series. It's an entirely different continuity on its own. I'll put links for those videos in the description below as well, in case you want to check them out. Number 2. They False Flag Fair Use an example of this was when they took down Dreamline Engine 75's episode redubs on his channel, and I did feel very sorry for the guy. Another example was when they false flag videos that show full episodes of the classic Thomas episodes, whether it be from seasons 1 all the way to 24, just so that we can watch Origins Go instead. Mattel, here's some advice for you. You may own the footage, but you don't own our voices, nor our nostalgia. You guys are basically breaking the Fair Use Act of 1976. I swear, if you false flag any of my videos for copyright infringement, I will take legal action and teach your big fat asses a lesson. Now before I get to my number one reason, I just want to give one dishonorable mention. The Big World Big Adventures era, aka seasons 22 to 24. I already did a video on this a long time ago, and yes, I still think it's okay overall, but at the same time, could have had more effort here and there in terms of the writing. I'll provide a link to it in the description below. And the number one reason why I hate Mattel is, is that they don't want to associate with the autistic community anymore. What a new low this one is. According to a tweet by Jaden C, he said this. And he showed a screenshot of what a Mattel representative just said at a Dale with Thomas event. I've also made a post about this about three weeks ago, and boy was I furious. Okay, I'm not exactly sure that this is legitimate, but still, I can't help but feel that this is a discriminatory against people with disabilities like me. But hey, I've heard rumors that Mattel is getting sued for this. And if that's the case, I hope they lose the court case this spring because, you know, they deserved it. Mattel, if you don't want to associate with the autism community anymore, then what was the point of introducing two new characters, Theo and Bruno, in the first place? This is why you can't defend Mattel anymore, people! If you guys are going to defend Mattel after all of these allegations, then you are either prejudiced against autistics in general, or just plain foolish. And don't you fucking dare use the it's for kids argument, because not only is it a poor defense, but it shuts up criticism. I mean, just because it's a kid's show does not excuse the terrible writing, direction, character redesigns, and animation. Because kids deserve much better than this crap. Again, I have no problem with people who like All Engines Go. For example, Jesus Works 123. As much as I hate his defense video on the subject, but at least he's trying to be civil with his opinion. Unlike some people in the fandom. But at the same time, I can't help but say that when you're supporting the reboot, that automatically means you're supporting Mattel and their crappy decisions. I said this before, and I'll say it again. Say what you want about Hit Entertainment, but at least they ended on an overall positive note, and they also cared about the quality of their merchandise despite how gimmicky some of them look. Mattel, on the other hand, not only they don't care about the quality of their Thomas toys, but they also don't care about their consumers, which is... Fucking disgusting. And that's why I don't want to support Mattel anymore. Aside from Wind Railway, Play Rail, and possibly that Mark Forster film, which I hope won't get cancelled like with that World War II Thomas film by Hit Movies. I know I've been rambling on for quite a while now, but I had to get my points across one last time before ending this video. And 
I know I've said a long time ago that we should boycott Mattel in the non-violent way, like what Gandhi did to the British Empire, but I don't care anymore. I don't care whether we boycott peacefully or not. I just want the old Thomas back and continue where season 24 left off. Not to mention that they should have introduced the Earl's Railway Museum a long time ago, as teased in season 20. I really hope Mattel goes bankrupt because of these five reasons alone. I really hope. And I'm hoping and praying that one day they'll be bought out by another company that would actually care about the original source material, whether it'll be Hasbro, Armin, or maybe Universal. Just as long as it's not Disney nor Viacom because that would be a worst case scenario, you know, for obvious reasons. <sighs> now, I need a moment to calm down after making this top 5 video, so hopefully I'll see you all again next time, but on more pleasant terms. Oh, and please spread this hashtag to hell with Mattel. Trust me, it's worth your time and support. This is Trevor Davis, signing off.